Okay, hello everyone. Uh, this is Sarvachan Verma, and currently I am working as assistant professor at Ajay Kumar Gandhi Engineering College, Gajipur. In last class, I have discussed about the constructor. Okay, so basically, constructor. If we talking about constructor, constructor is used to initialize the object of a particular class. It means. when you want to something initialize at the time of object creation then constructor play very vital role okay now and second thing in python a constructor is always named by the double underscore in it double underscore okay second thing it contain code for initializing a new object of the class to a specific initial state okay initial state means setting instance attribute values suppose i have a suppose i am one a customer and i need to open a new account saving account at a particular bank okay that bank should be bob state bank of india at and isc lot of i have no issue but when you go to the bank uh, they open one account imme imme Im immediately my registration form filled by the particular branch manager or whatever any type of clerk but when my name is moved to the server bank server immediately i am treated as a object of a particular server ओके क्योंकि इन बैंकिंग इन इन बैंक फॉर बैंकिंग सर्वर एवरी कस्टमर एज ए एज ट्रीट एज ए ऑब्जेक्ट ओके नो बट एट द टाइम ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट क्रिएशन एट द टाइम ऑफ कस्टमर क्रिएशन वी हैव रिक्वायर्ड लॉट ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन लाइक कस्टमर ये लाइक कस्टमर नेम कस्टमर एड्रेस कस्टमर मोबाइल नेम एक्सेट्रा लॉट ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन आर रिक्वायर्ड this is a at that time constructor play very vital role if you want to initialize something at the time of object creation then constructor is used to initialize okay basically what is the advantage of constructor to reduce the code length to reduce the length of code hai na second thing you will see here uh, this is one class class name is person and inside this class this is a constructor this is a constructor this constructor take one argument first argument as self and second one is second argument is s okay now this person class contain one constructor and one function the function name is hello and inside the function hello i am going to print hello and particular name of a particular uh, object okay okay you will see here t is the object of which class person class now you will see here when this line object this is the line is treat as a object creation because this is the line where i am going to declare one object t equal person person is the object of a of a class when this line will be executed immediately immediately constructor automatically called okay and the value of john is passed to and the value of john and the value of john is passed to this argument and this value will be transferred to this instance attribute okay and at the time of next line then fit second line will be executed t dot hello immediately this function will be called with the reference of with the help of object t and we will get hello what is the self dot name what is the value 
of attribute name in the reference of object T is John. We will get hello John. You will see here. At the time of object creation, constructor will call automatically. You will see here. You will see here. At the time of this is the first line. At the time of object creation. At the time of object creation, you will see here. This constructor will call automatically. But this is a normal function I am calling with the help of particular object. This is the difference between the normal function and constructor. So basically constructor function taking initial value of instance attributes or we can say at the time of uh, object creation if you want to initialize something then you can go the concept of constructor. Okay. So constructor what is the first point about the constructor? Constructor is automatically called when the function of a class will be created, when the object of a class will be created. Second one, constructor is always named with double underscore in it. Okay. And there is a no need to call the constructor. At the time of object creation, it is automatically called. Okay. Now I am going to write one code. You will see here. Inside this class, suppose class, the class name is student. Okay. This is the class. Inside the class, suppose I am going to create one registration form. I am want to create the registration form for a student. For a student, suppose we have four attributes. First one is student name, student roll number, student roll number and student marks or second one is branch. Okay, this is the branch. You will see here. For or suppose karo, suppose these are the attributes branch. For all students, you will see here branch name should be same. Okay. But these values, name, roll number, and marks vary from one object to another. For all the objects of a class students, branch should be same. Okay. We can say college name should be same. So, if the value of particular object, if the value is vary from object to object, then we go for, then we go for instance attribute. If the value of a variable or value of attribute does not vary from object to object, it means it is common for all the objects of a particular class. Then in case we go for the class attributes. Okay. Second question is, we have to declare the instance attribute inside the function or we have to declare the class attribute inside the function body. I think you got the clear clarity. Okay. Now, I am going to initialize. Okay. I have take one constructor def constructor name is init okay first argument is self comma name for n roll number for r and marks for n i am taking three arguments okay because at the time of object creation i am i have need to initialize the attribute value now self dot x equal n self dot y equal r and third one is self dot z equal n we can say x, y and z 
our instance attribute but now i am going to create one class attribute so class means branch now i am going to create one branch variable it or this branch variable is treat as a is treat as a class variable and x y z is treat as a instance variable or instance attributes now i am going to design one function def print info okay this is a sense okay now inside this print info function i am going to define declare for statement print name comma self dot n second thing print print roll number comma self dot uh, uh, self dot y or the name of a particular students inside the uh, instance variable x then print uh this is the marks comma self dot z okay now i am going to access the class variable okay print branch branch comma what is the name of class A student A student dot branch okay so inside the student class i am declare one constructor and one function this is called the print info now this is a class body okay now how we can access the member of this class with the help of object i have only one thing this is the object by this object i can access otherwise there is a no way to access the member of a class how we can declare suppose s1 equal s1 is the object of which class a student class okay we will see here the name of a student is john okay uh, the roll number is 1 and marks is 78 okay so this is a student this is a constructor at the time of object creation constructor will be called and all these value will be transferred to these instance variable x and y okay and first argument self contain the address of object s1 clear now i am going to call this function s1 dot print underscore info when this function is called immediately these statements will be executed what is the value of these statements self dot x matlab means name name john roll number One marks 
78 and branch it we will get you can create 1 lakh number of objects no issue at all okay this functionality will be accessed by the 1 lakh object of a of a class students okay i think you got the clear clarity about this example how what is the difference between the instance attribute and class attributes how we can access the instance attribute and class attributes instance attributes are accessed by the self whereas whereas the class attribute accessed by the class name okay constructor is automatically called how we can define the constructor what is the difference between the calling the constructor and normal methods okay so you will got the clear clarity about this now it is very important concept in the term of object oriented programming okay inheritance okay so basically a class inheritance is designed to model relationship of the type x is a y basically inheritance always known as is a relationship first thing we can say is a relationship or we can say inheritance both are same things both are same terminology okay but what is the concept of inheritance if one class if one class acquire the property of another class if one class acquire the property of another class then we can say the class has a is a relationship with a particular inherited class okay now inheritance is a concept this is the second terminology inheritance is the concept by which one class object can access the property of another class okay now you will see here i have defined i have declared yeah shape is the super class and inside the super uh, shape class suppose i have declare uh, 3 to 4 functions okay now the sub class name is rectangle circle and triangle okay if these both class has is a relationship this is called the is a relationship we can say is a relationship or inheritance okay so now rectangle class circle class and triangle class objects are capable to access the functionality of a shape class there is a no way if both class are inherited then they can access the facilities it means the object of rectangle class the object of circle class and the object of triangle class can access the then can call the functions of shape class okay now <clears throat> inheritance okay the function and attributes of a super class what is the super class this is called the parent class or we can say this is this is the base class okay the functions and attributes of a super class are inherited by a sub class okay you will see here this is the super class shape and this is the sub class okay now you will see here this class rectangle class object can access the shape class property and inherited class can override modify or argument the functions and attributes of its parent class i will discuss with practically example okay so you have you can got the clear clarity about this creating a sub class how we can create the sub class you will see here uh, you will see here we have one class shape okay and the body of this shape class i have discussed and de declared with pass but uh, no issue <coughs> now how we can inherit the particular class in python you will see here this is the class rectangle rectangle class inherit the property of shape class now if shape class have 
8 or 10 or 1 lakh functions all functions are by default available to by default available to rectangle class by default available to by default available to rectangle class this is the beauty of inheritance okay now inside this we have one inside the rectangle class we have one function this is called the area and i am going to print uh, sorry return the area of a particular dimension no issue at all so the concept is that how we can creating the subclass so basically shape is a subclass uh, or rec uh, shape is a parent class and rectangle is a subclass you will see here this in this example uh, this is a simple super class shape inside the super class shape inside the super class shape i have one constructor this is called the constructor okay now rectangle class inherit the shape class so by default all the properties by this statement come inside this class okay now you will see here rectangle class have two functions first is constructor second one is normal function now come to this point okay when this line will be executed the object of which class the object of which class is rectangle class when the object is created automatically constructor will be called immediately this piece of code will be executed this piece of code will be executed because this is the constructor and constructor is automatically called okay Imme immediately 10 will transfer to this argument and h will transfer to this argument take a very bit special care this body will be executed immediately you will see here inside the rectangle class constructor shape class constructor will be called you will see here immediately this constructor will be called how it is possible this is possible because because rectangle class inherit the shape class now rectangle class object is capable to access all the facility of a shape class done now <clears throat> now you will see here that the value of his color is transferred to in the reference of r1 width and height will be initialized now inside the print r1 is a object dot width what is the r1 of uh, 10 r1 dot height area immediately we will you will see here 10 into 550 and you will see here i will access the property of shape class because of i have inherited the shape class r1 dot color immediately i will get this this is the this okay i think through this example you will got the clarity about the inheritance concept okay so basically inheritance is a very uh, important because through this inheritance we can achieve the code reusability reusability we achieve the code reusability okay this is a uh, very good and lot of total python python class hierarchy develop with the concept of inheritance total java class hierarchy develop with the concept of called reusability in java the topmost class is object class as well as in python the topmost class is object class all the class all the subclass inherit the property of object class okay uh, now <coughs> in next class i will discuss the concept of overriding okay thank you so much